So up to this point, we've been immersed in a lot of coding from day one all the way to now. And once in a while, we've done some ancillary and important things, such as the graphics. And a lot of us perhaps are not graphic people, so that might have been a challenge. The last thing that we need to talk about regarding the app itself also is one of these things that most likely a lot of us don't have the skill in, which is marketing. We've got this app that we've created, and we want more people to know about it and download it. And if, especially if our app is a paid app, we want people to know about it and download it to, to, to pay for it to, uh, to get our app. So we need to start to look at this topic, and I'll be writing some notes, and we'll, we'll do some things about marketing. Marketing. Um, also known as advertising. We need to advertise, we need to market, we need, we need to let people know that our app exists. This is a whole topic in and, in and of itself. This is a whole college degree, a, a degree in marketing. Obviously, we only have two hours to talk about it, but I'm going to cut to the chase to the most important things. So what we need to do here, the purpose is, purpose of marketing, to make people aware of your app. To get people, and I'll put these notes in the folder at the end of the day, of course, to get people to download your app. Making, making them simply aware of it, of your app, is still not good enough. We need to then convince them, get people to download the app, and then to get feedback for the app. And to get uh, people to become our free marketers. We have to engage, as we will see how in a little bit, we have to engage in some marketing. We have to get, we have to try to get people to find out about the app and to download it. Truly good marketing then is self self-fulfilling in that then we get our fans and those that have downloaded to then become free advertisers for for us free marketers if they like our app enough well we want them to then to start to tell their friends and family and have it snowball into a larger a larger thing this of course can be pretty complex but one of the ways one of the best ways for us one of many ways to market in the modern world, in modern times, is social media. Social media is basically marketing 2.0. This marketing, these ads that have been around for literally centuries, one or two centuries, marketing, ads, and all of that, that those, that's existed. That's a human concept that has existed for, for decades, a couple hundred years. You can go back to like the 1800s when the first marketing, the first ads were out. And you can go even further than that. There's always been a form of advertising in, in human society. So uh, that billboard that's on the side of the road is advertising to you. That uh, radio ad that you hear between your, sh your, your music that's advertising. The commercial that you skip when you watch uh, TV, that's advertising. The person on the street flipping that sign around, that's advertising, that's marketing. All of that is the purpose, all of that kind of marketing 1.0 is in the purpose of making people aware of that product or service, getting people to buy um, or use that product or service to get feedback for that product or service and to get other people to then become free marketers for that product or service. So replace app with product or service. Soap, toothpaste, plumbers, etc. Anything. That's the essence then, the purpose of marketing. These points that I made over here specifically about our app, but these points here are about all marketing. Classic marketing, radio, TV, newspaper, billboards, etc. 
sign twirlers modern Twitter Facebook Google Plus Pinterest on and on and on every social network can be used as a marketing tool every or any social network can be used as a marketing tool and um, I believe and there's uh, several others as well that uh, social media has two aspects the uh, fun frivolous personal aspect or purpose and then the you know, business company serious marketing version or a purpose of social media and both are equally valid I'm not saying frivolous and such to denigrate it I'm just saying that people use social media for fun, frivolous, personal things. To connect with their friends and family, to share funny cat pictures, etc. That's perfectly legitimate, that's perfectly fine. That's a big aspect of social media. And then people, often companies, use social media also, but as a business purpose, to reach an audience. Maybe through funny cat pictures, sure. But people or businesses can use social media and both purposes are valid and both purposes are common in addition to teaching this programming class uh, in the company that I work at most of what we do in that company is related to the marketing aspect of things um, we do social media for clients we do web design for clients, we do app design for clients, we do photography, we do blogging, all of that. So for this college, if you look me up on the catalog, I'm in the section of this computer programming stuff, but I'm also listed much more often in the classes of social media, in the classes of WordPress, in the classes of blogging, and all of those marketing, you know, modern generation of marketing classes, the digital marketing. So. I have then both aspects that I can bring here. Let's talk about programming an app, and then let's talk about marketing it, getting people to know about it. And so social media, I teach this stuff in much more detail in my other classes. I teach a class on social media. It's a, it's a two-part class where we go into great detail about all the social networks, the theories of them, and practice. We go in and get hands-on on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all of that. I just finished part two of the class yesterday. We, we wrapped it up talking about YouTube. Um, in those other classes, I talk about the value of blogging and uh, having a good website like in uh, WordPress and such. So all of that is in service of marketing. If we take away the aspect of we've got an app to market, let's say I am a plumber and I want to get more people to hire me to to do plumbing services for them again social media and all of that works marketing all of that works putting ads or getting a presence on Facebook or putting out my commercials on YouTube and all of that marketing stuff will help that plumber reach an audience and get more clients and do well as a plumber um, for us for our app getting our app on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube etc that could be valuable to reach an audience, to make them aware of the app, to get downloads, to make sales, and so forth. So what we're going to talk about is just the tip of the iceberg of how to use social media to get attention for our app. We have many social networks to choose from. We're going to focus on one of them at the moment, which is Google+. The biggest one in the world is Facebook. That's a much larger topic than we can get into right now. And Twitter is also very powerful and has a lot of reach. And there's Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus has been around since, I think, 2011. It's a Google property. Notice how the Google company has their hands in, in everything. They've got search. They've got an operating system, Android. They've got mobile devices. They've got maps. They've got email. They've got a social network. So... Um, 
one of the reasons I really like Google Plus is we can target. We can we can target our efforts very precisely. So good social media marketing is about targeting. In the real world, that billboard that's on the five that I drive by every day, lots of people are seeing it, but very few people are acting upon it. I don't need a plumber at the moment. I don't need a lawyer at the moment. I don't want that hamburger at the moment. So in the world of marketing, we have the concept of uh, impressions and conversions. Impressions are people see your product. And I'm just going to say it generically, product as in your app, your company, your service, whatever, your product. Impressions are that people see or learn about or hear about your product. And conversions are people act upon it. People do something about your product. So if I'm a plumber, they call me. They hire me. If it's an app, they download the app. If it's a service, you know, they, they call me to book an appointment. Impressions are that someone knows about you, hears about you, sees you, but if someone actually does something, that's a conversion. That's true in marketing 1.0, that billboard on the, on the side of the road, that radio ad, all of that. It works also in the digital world as well. If I'm going to tweet about my app, I can get a variety of impressions that people saw my tweet. But what, value, what is valued a bit more, of course, is the conversion that someone clicks the tweet to download my app. That's the conversion. That then goes into the CTR, which is click-through rate, which is a formula, conversions divided by impressions. It'll give a simple percentage. Seven people clicked on my Facebook post divided by 700 people saw the Facebook post. 7 divided by 700 is a very small number. So if I had 7 clicks to download my app based on 10 impressions, 7 divided by 10, now that's 70 percent. So that's one measure, one measure of quote-unquote success. We can have many measures of success. Again, marketing is a big topic. We don't have time to talk about every aspect of it. But uh, you can get these stats on your Amazon dashboard. Amazon will tell you how many downloads you've gotten and, and all of this. At your click-through rate, you can measure how successful you are. To help us reach that audience, to possibly get more conversions, more clicks, more downloads, we'll do some, we'll do some social media. Uh, and in the real world, as I was saying, that a lot of people hear that radio ad, and a lot of people see that TV ad, and a lot of people see that guy twirling the sign. Very few people actually then, at that moment, need that product. When I need a plumber, a good thing I saw that ad on the side of the road, I'm going to call that plumber. The great thing about social media nowadays is, via social media, back up here, good marketing in general, good marketing is about targeting. Via social media, we can target very well for free or paid because that ad on the billboard costs money. That radio ad costs money. That person twirling the sign costs money. In the real world, pretty much all the time, any marketing costs money. In the, world, in the realm of social media, it's free to tweet. It's free to post on Facebook. It's free to use Google+. It's free to use YouTube. It's free to use all these social networks. And there are versions of all the social networks that you can use to pay, and you use it to pay and to reach more of an audience. Yes, we're not going to talk about those. That's a different topic. But um, with free methods of social media, we can hopefully reach this audience to make people aware of our ad number one, to make people download our app number two, to have people review positively our app number three, to number four, get more people to download our app. Uh, we'll use Google Plus. 
specifically um, communities to reach a targeted audience. Hundreds of millions of people use Google+. Hundreds of millions of people use Twitter. Hundreds of millions, actually 1.7 billion people use Facebook. Lots and lots and lots and lots of people use Facebook. And hundreds of millions of people from the ranges of 300 million to 800 million use these other social networks. So that's the same problem of putting that, that ad on, that, on a TV show. Lots of people are watching the TV show, very few people are actually buying the product. They're not targeted enough. Via social media, like Google Plus Communities, as we will see, we can, we can go to the, to the places where people congregate around a topic and market directly to them. So Google Plus Communities are spots in Google Plus where people congregate on a specific topic where you can market to them, where you can reach out to them, where you can let them know, I've got this app. I've got this app that I developed for education. So I'm going to go to the education community of Google Plus and tell people about it. I've got this brand new, let's say looking ahead to the future, I've got this brand new game that I created for iPhone. I'm going to go to the game community on Google Plus and tell people about it. I have this Android app about finance that I developed. I'm going to go to the financial community of Google Plus to tell people about my app. That's the targeting that is most effective for good marketing. Because if I simply tweet to my 10 followers on Twitter, hey, I've got a new app. Well, I've got such a low amount of people, 10 people, that would care. And they have so many different varied interests that are they going to care about that app? Maybe I did build, let's say, a thousand followers on Facebook. Even out of those 1,000, do they care about specifically what I'm trying to market at this moment? So by Google Plus communities, we can go directly to where the people are that would most care about our, our app, our product. Again, it's a big topic, but within the amount of time that we have here, I think we can create or we can do some things very useful here. Any any questions at this point? So, um, we, we are the Google Plus I already closed my screen, unfortunately, but if you go back to developer.amazon.com, you'll be able to uh, click on your app, and at the top it says reporting. You go to your reporting tab, and right there it'll tell you everything about who downloaded your app, when did they download it, what device did they have, everything. So we can see all of that uh, conversion and, and data. So that's a good point because right now we're, we're going to engage in a little bit of this. And so right now we have a baseline of no downloads, probably. So then as we do this that we're about to talk about, then we will see in our developer panel, we're going to see the downloads as more people get aware of our app. How many of you currently have a Gmail email address? Raise your hands. Most people, many people. If you don't, that's okay. Because what we're going to do is we will take a little bit of time to, to set up this account. Uh, if you, again, like everything we've done in the class, uh, it's best to follow along and, and do it as I'm about to do it. And uh, what we're going to do is create a Google Plus account. A quick show of hands, how many of you currently have a Google Plus account? A couple of people. Okay, very good. So you can use it as I'm about to show here, or um, you can create a new one if you'd like. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to open my web browser and let's go to the address plus.google.com. You can get to Google Plus in a variety of ways because it's all this system that's all collected together under the main Google umbrella. But if you go to plus.google.com,
you will see one of the different aspects of Google+, Plus, which is called collections. Collections is different than communities. Don't worry about it at the moment. But in short, again, these are topics. There's a topic here, I guess, of nature on the wings. But the hollow San Francisco, 2016 Los Angeles. So these different topics that people can follow and pay attention to. Collections are a little bit different than I want to talk about, so don't worry about them yet. Communities, I think, are going to be more effective. So on the top right corner, there's a sign in. If you don't have a Gmail account, that's okay. Go ahead and click sign in. And so it'll ask you here, if you've got a Gmail account, sign in. If you don't have a Gmail account, it'll ask you to create one. So either or, either take a moment to sign in or sign up for this. So if you're, if you're going to try what we're going to try together, take a moment to sign in or sign up. I'm going to sign in with um, one of my accounts. So if anyone's having any trouble, let me know. You want to sign in or you want to sign up to the account? Question? Mm -hmm. You mean Nick Rubin has to save my password? Is that something? I don't do that in a public computer right. here, but our computers are pretty safe because remember we've got deep freeze mm -hmm. and it erases everything. So it, it didn't actually save your password. But at home, it's convenient because then that way you don't have to type your password all the time. I've had a Google Plus account for a while, and when I talk about this, these social networks in my social media class, I, I tell people uh, Google Plus is actually my favorite social network. I am literally on every social network, pretty much. Um, and I like them all to various degrees, and in, in that class, on interests of full disclosure, I say that uh, I hate Facebook, and I don't like using it, and I never log in. But for marketing purposes, because the company that I'm in, we, we do marketing. For marketing purposes, I love Facebook. As a company, I love Facebook to reach an audience. As a person, I hate Facebook. But I put that aside and I do my job as a marketer on Facebook. What I do, like as a company and as a person, I really like face, uh, Google+. Plus. I think it's my number one social network. I really like it. I've had a lot of great connections and friends and all of that and, and business opportunities through Google+. Plus. Twitter, I would say, is my second favorite network. Um, and uh, there's a lot of them out there, Instagram, YouTube, and all of that. But uh, this is just one of many social networks that, for our purposes, we will use as a marketing tool. You don't have to really use this as a, as a place to meet friends and family and such. You're not going to convince your friends and family to come join you on Google+. Don't try. Just have fun on Facebook with your friends and family. But for marketing purposes, um, Google Plus is one of the good ones to use. So, anyone having any trouble? Everyone managed to sign in, perhaps? Okay, so based on uh, some factors, you may have the, the new design of Google Plus or you may have the old design. Um, if it's telling you perhaps about Meet the new Google Plus, I would say, yeah, let's go, let's try it. Um, just so that we're all looking at the same thing. Uh, the way you can tell you've got the new Google Plus is, you know, the side menu looks like mine, and the top bar <coughs> looks like mine, like that. So if it looks way too different than mine, let me know so that you don't get lost, but we're hopefully all logged into Google+. And Google+, Plus is just like every other social network um, I talk about in the social media class. Basically all, let's say nearly, all social networks have the same actions. 
there is post or share, there is like, there is comment, there is reply, I'm sorry, uh, reshare, and there is follow. Basically every network has these actions. YouTube, Google+, Facebook, Instagram, all of these networks, so many networks that you probably haven't heard of. But there's always post, which is add something to the network, which could be, um, which could be like, um, like a picture, Let's say example, uh, picture, link, video, uh, text, just content. You're you're adding something to the network. On uh, on YouTube specifically, you're adding a video. On Pinterest, you're you're pinning a picture. On uh, Twitter, you can write an interesting, clever thing or a link. On Facebook, you could add a video. On Google Plus, you could add a, a video or a picture or whatever. You're adding content. You're posting. You're sharing. You can do that with all the social networks, basically. A like is that we'll, we'll do it in terms about other people. Other people can like your stuff on a social network. So when someone enjoys your post, they show it with a like. The different networks might call it different things. On Facebook for a long time, it was the thumbs up. That was the like on Facebook. You've posted that funny cat picture, someone liked it, they gave you the thumbs up. Facebook has recently changed it now. You can add a, a bunch of other interactions like the angry face and whatever else there is there. Over on Twitter, if, uh, if someone likes your tweet, they like it and it's a little heart icon. Here on Google+, Plus, we will see you've got a like as well, but it's called the plus one. Someone gave you a plus one. Someone liked your post. The next kind of action is a comment. Someone took the time to add their opinion. or praise to your post. Their feedback. Someone took the time to write something. It could be a basic, as basic as someone saying, great, or as good as someone you know, writing a whole sentence or two about why they really liked your post and saying, thank you for sharing that. That really was interesting to me, and, and it changed and it made me happy today. You know, that's one of the interactions. On Twitter, that's a reply to a tweet. On Facebook, it's a comment on the post. On Google+, Plus, it's a comment. It's just another interaction that all the social networks have. I share something over on, uh, on Instagram. Someone can comment on that picture. The next level is, is a reshare, which uh, someone liked your post enough to spread it to more people. To share it with more people, to send it to more people, to make more people aware of it. Um, this is what I was saying previously about getting other people to become marketers for you. Because we're going to share on Google Plus, hey, we've got a brand new app. But we also want other people to see our app and like it so much and such that they share it to, for more people. Let's say in the example on Google Plus, I have uh, seven followers. I have seven people that are paying attention to me on Google Plus. The point of a follow, as I'll get to in a moment, is that that's someone paying attention to you. So if I post something on Google Plus or Twitter or whatever, and I have seven followers, in theory, seven people saw my post, seven people could click to download, in theory. Well, what if one of those seven people had 70 followers, and one of that person then liked my post enough that they shared it, reshared it, to their followers? So I reached the seven people that I have connection directly to, and one of those people then shared it to their 70 followers. So I reached 77 people. 
the original seven that I had in the 70 of that friend. And what if one of those people, that of the 70 that got shared to, what if they had 700 followers? That in theory reached out to 777 people. That's the definition of going viral. That one person shared something, someone else liked it, shared it to someone else, that person shared it to someone else, to another, to another, to another, and it goes on to more people. So when we share, is another interaction, the one that helps us get more fame, more views, more impressions, hopefully leading to more conversions. And I'm writing this in this way of like, comment, reshare, in that order because I believe that is the order of their value. Not that a like is bad, of course. A like, though, is just the lowest level of this. A like is that you see something on Facebook, you click like, you move on, what's next? You're on Instagram, you see pictures, you give it the, you give it the like, the heart, you move on, what's next? It has a value, of course, that someone enjoyed your picture, but then what's next? The comment is the next level up because then someone hopefully took the time to write something intelligent and onto your post and positive and so forth that's showing that someone cared enough. And it might have been simply as someone saying, great or thank you, or thumbs up, but it's still someone took the time, a little bit extra time, to write a comment. That's the next level. The next level of that is someone liked your stuff so much that they want to let someone else know about it. So that's a higher level of the previous two. The highest level, then, is the follow. Someone liked your stuff so much, they want to keep up to date. Someone liked your posts so much. We want to see all future posts. That's what a follow is on these social networks. It's not just a good ego boost for me to see that I've got seven followers on Twitter, or that I've got 500 likes on Facebook. Um, Facebook calls them likes more than follows. Uh, but all the networks have some sort of mechanism to follow. And it's not just an ego boost to have that number increase. That is a value meaning all of those people have liked my stuff so much they want to see it every time I post something, post something new. It's a captive audience. Cap captive audience. A targeted audience. This is what I was saying earlier, that billboard that's on the highway, lots of people are seeing it, lots of impressions. Very few conversions. Not everyone needs that product on that billboard. But here, what if you could see the billboards that you would care about? What if the billboards would change to show you what you would care about? We're going to have that in the future eventually, that the billboards are going to be dynamic and change for them to show what you want, probably. And we already see that on social media and websites a lot, that we see ads. I was browsing technology blogs all day long, and when I go to some website, it starts to show me technology ads. You'll probably see that in the, in the real world at some point. But before that's so intrusive, the follow is that someone liked your stuff enough that they want to see it. So that's why it's important if from a marketing standpoint to build followers. From a personal standpoint for whatever purpose you have, but from a marketing standpoint, the reason you would use social media to build followers is to get that target audience. A captive audience. And when we start to use any social network, if this is the first time you've ever used Google+, right now you have zero followers. You have no audience. You can post on Google+, Plus as much as you want, and really no one's gonna see it. You have no followers. No one knows you exist. If I create a brand new Twitter account, again, no one knows I exist, really. So I can tweet all day long and no one's gonna see that my ad is there, my, my app is there. Every social network starts off like that, that you have no followers. The great thing is, then, why I really like to talk about Google+, Plus is because we have communities. Go ahead on the left side, click Communities. 264,000 people hanging out talking about Android. 148,000 about developing Google+, Plus. 3,000 talking about jQuery Mobile. Etc. Yours may look like something else because I've already used this a little bit. Yours is most likely looking like this, recommended. This is saying Instagram community, 4 million members. Apple community, 7, 5, half a million members. 
Marvel community, 323,000. These are people on Google Plus that care about a topic that have joined together to talk about that topic. So let's go to communities, and you see you have recommended, member, and yours. You are free to create your own community. You can go to yours and create a community and start up here a community where everyone talking about the things that you love. I'm going to recommend don't bother. Don't create your own community because then now you have to take care of it and moderate it and get followers and all of that. It's a big endeavor. I recommend to use to join communities that already exist. Um, and as, as we'll see in a moment, when we start to join a community, they will be listed under members. You're a member of these communities. The way we will use this is, if you scroll around here, since I've already used it a little bit, it's already kind of tailoring itself to me. But if this is the very first time you use it, you're going to get such a variety of recommendations like fitness and food and all of that. Um, so that we're all looking at the same thing. Uh, here under recommended community at the top search search Android at the top click to search Android just press enter uh, ignore all of these suggestions just search Android at the top Google Plus will then show you collections regarding Android communities regarding Android people and pages about Android, and then actual people's posts talking about Android. Um, so I'm searching a topic. This is what's showing up all over Google Plus about that topic. Under Communities, you can see Communities. Click More. Show me more communities based on the keyword Android. The Android Dev community, a quarter of a million users. This other, other Android community, nearly a million users. Another Android one, 318, 1.9 million here. Android Developer Tools, 101. Android Authority, 168, etc. I'm seeing all of these communities related to Android, and basically, as you scroll down, the community size gets smaller and smaller, uh, pretty much. So, all of these people. Some of these are saying whatever beta tester, beta program, beta program. People are using Google Plus communities to beta test their apps. We didn't quite have a lot of time to talk about that. Uh, but here is where you can show your app to a select group of people uh, as, you, as you test it. Anyway, the purpose of the community where it matters to us is that if I... Uh, if I ignore the communities and I'm on my home screen, you don't have to do this, but if I'm on my home screen of Google Plus and I'm gonna share here, um, hey everyone, my app, and then I have a link to my app, remember I can get my Amazon link, so I'm saying, hey everyone, check out my app on Amazon. Well, everyone, I have no followers, no one's gonna see that. Unless someone thinks about searching some keywords to find me, no one's going to no one's going to see this. It's going to go to the public, which is everyone on Google+, Plus, which is no one. I have no followers. No one's going to really know or care. Well, with communities, I have a target audience. I want to reach 264,000 members. Don't click Join on these yet, but click on the icon of any community. If you see this one of 950,000 members, click on the icon, not the joint yet. Click on the icon. And so here I'm seeing, okay, Joe shared something here. Cody shared something. Uh, Fuga shared something here. Rami, Dwight, all of these people are sharing stuff about Android. People are seeing it. This one was... 27 minutes ago, 2 hours ago, 4 hours ago, 7 hours ago. This is active. People are sharing 
stuff about Android. Games, event highlights, stuff about Android. In theory, then, nearly a million people are seeing this stuff. Uh, it shows here 10 people liked this post. Over here, 8 people. Over here, people, 581 votes. Someone said, which wallpaper do you prefer? So they're just saying, which of these wallpapers do you like? And 581 people have voted on it. Uh, let's say that one. Yep. So 81% of people like that wallpaper. So did I. People are talking about nougat, and people are commenting. Some of these have a comment below it. They have the ability to share. Uh, the point is, I want this. I want to, to reach this audience. No one knows I exist. But here are people talking about Android. They might care about my Android app. Um, when uh, when you're using when you're using Google Plus, there's going to be the option to post, to share, to add to Google Plus. When you're in a community, however, that you have not joined, there's no button like that. I don't I don't see the share button. How can I tell people? How can I interact with people? There's no there's no share button yet until you join. Before you click join. Um, the point of us looking at the community is because we also want to read the rules. Let's make some notes here. Google Plus Communities. Help us reach an interested audience. Joining a community allows us to post to it, to a captive audience. We can join multiple communities and share them all, post to them all. However, read the rules of the community. Google Plus communities are like the classic BBSs and, and classic forums of the internet where someone is in charge. And the someone here is not, to some degree, is not Google. Communities are run and moderated by Google Plus users, not Google Plus. As long as the community is following the basic rules of Google Plus, which is, you know, about no hate speech and no impersonation and, you know, whatever the rules of the community are, of Google Plus are, that is of the Google Plus service. A community is free to exist and run, be run as however the moderators want. And so as I said, you can go to the screen here about create, I'm going to create a community and therefore I'm going to run it how I want. And if in my community about Android I never want anyone to mention anything about uh, LG phones, I can delete it. It's my community. I can moderate it how I want. So that's what's happening with all of these communities. There's some moderator, they'll have a little badge next to their name that says moderator, and they'll run the community the way they, they decided to run it. And usually those rules will be listed somewhere on the side here about community. This one's very, very basic. It just says for Android owners everywhere. There, I'm going to back up and let's see another community about community. Welcome to the official Android developer community. This community is a place where all Android devs can help one another. Please read the community guidelines. So someone has these guidelines.
Let's see what those guidelines say. Uh, is this means this is not the appropriate place for certain types of posts. Spam, soliciting, recruiting, promotional posts, ROM, theme, and icon pack development, posts about new devices, system updates, routing, posts without any texts. Posts of this nature may be removed without warning or result in being banned from the community. And then it goes on for other things here. So, Ian Lake, the moderator, one of the moderators of Android Development Community, has set these rules out there, and then it's up to him and his moderators to enforce these, enforce these rules. So it's not going to be a free-for-all for you to join any community and post anything you want, however you want. It depends on the community. So, read the rules of the community. If, if it's okay for you to share your apps, if it's okay to do self-promotion, do so. If the community is saying you shouldn't promote your own apps, don't do it. Because what could happen at best is that your post is removed. And at worst is that you are removed from the community. And therefore you're going to lose access to thousands of people. It happens. It has happened to me. I've been a member of a community uh, where I thought I was following all the rules. But the particular moderator seemed to be much, much more stringent than even the rules made it out to be, and I got kicked out of the community. And the thing is, there is no recourse to get you back into the community. There is an official Google Plus community, like from official Google Plus people. See if I can find it here. Right here, Google Plus Help. It's got one million users. This is official information from the official Google Plus team. And I went there and I had screenshots and proof. And I said, I look at these rules. I followed the rules. I posted what was allowed, but I kept getting my post deleted. And I've been banned. What can you do? And they told me, sorry, we cannot do anything. As long as the community is following the general rules of Google Plus, the moderators can, use, can run that community however they want. And that particular moderator was, in my opinion, a tyrant. And so me and other people were getting kicked out because of the content we were posting that wasn't exactly what he wanted. And I can't get back into that community. And I lost the community of whatever, 100,000 people. I found another community related with not as many people, with nicer moderators, and I'm part of it now. But what I'm saying is that if you're trying to promote your, your app and such, don't get kicked out of the community by not following the rules. People. I mean, the creator of the community? Yes, exactly. So if I create the community, I, I set the rules. Exactly. That's the good and the bad about it. If you create a community, you can set your rules, you're in charge. The bad about it is it's very difficult to then get people to come to your community and to post to your community and to be to keep it active. So I don't recommend creating your own community. You I, Exactly. Now you're going to be a maintainer. You're now you're going to be a moderator, and that's a lot of effort and time. So I would recommend instead joining communities, but following the rules. No, you don't receive emails, but you get when when you join communities, you're going to see the posts on your home screen here. Yes, like I'm seeing here. I'm seeing all of these posts here on my home screen from all of these communities that I've joined. You're not going to be getting emails uh, that keep bothering you, but you're going to see communities posts on your home screen. So if you join a lot of them, then you'll see uh, you're going to see their posts on your home screen. So if we look at the rules of any community, some of them say something like no cross-posting. What that it means is that if you share your post on one community, don't share the exact same thing on another community. How do they know that? These moderators sometimes have nothing else to do, so they're checking all of these things to run their community exactly how they envision. 
so then they go and check out other communities. Uh, I don't doubt some moderators join this community and that community and that community if they're related, and then they police it how they want. And so, whoops, I shared the same thing on two communities. They removed it from their community because they want new, original, unique content for their community. They don't want the sh they, they don't want the same article here being posted on every community. You never know. So read the rules of the community. Let's see another one here. Android, 1.9 million people. Before I join it, I'm going to click to view. I'm going to read about the community. Brought to you by Android Central, etc. All things Android. Well, we want the community rather loose. There are some things we don't want. Spam, which is linking or referring to anything not Android related. Okay, I can do that. Two, advertising another Google Plus community. Okay, fine. I won't do that. Nudity. Okay. Racism. Okay. Pirate APKs. Okay, direct link, direct APK links not from the app developer. So I guess if I follow these rules overall, it's okay to show off my apps. To talk about my apps and say, hey everyone, I've got a new app, check it out, you might like it. Or hey everyone, come join my developer's uh, preview for my new app. So. You can go to these communities and share your stuff and get people to you get these you get these impressions, which is that people see it. Did Shahad saw this, but did Shahad download it? You'll have to check your developers and Amazon developers portal to see if they if they actually bought it or downloaded it. So the way I would concretely use this, I've been talking in theory, you want to look at communities and join them. So I'm a member of this one, let's say. I won't actually do it, but I, let's say I go to this community, I click on the, the little pencil to share something. Now I have the ability to share something directly to that community, which is going to reach about 264,000 people. So if I have the link of my app, Remember, I can get the link to my app if it really has been published. I'm going to attach a link to my app. So I'm about to share it to that community and, and say, uh, I just developed a new app. Uh, it's great for education, you know, whatever I want to say here about it. And then I've got the link, and then I post it. It's going to reach a quarter of a million people. I'm not actually going to share it at the moment because that's not what this community is about. It's about actual development. What I could do here is ask a question. I'm having trouble developing my app. Here's my code. Can anyone check it out? That's worked for me. I have gone to these communities, like the JavaScript community, and asked questions there, and people have answered it. Yes, there's Stack Exchange and all of that, but here was another perspective. I've gone to these communities to ask questions and help, and people answer. People in the right community are pretty cool and, and helpful. And so for us here to market our app, to advertise our app, we would find a, a related community, maybe the Android community, maybe maybe a game community, education community, whatever you think your app is about. Um, after you join, you have the ability to, to share to it, to, to post to it, and then you can uh, get attention for it. Yes, this is a lot of effort. It doesn't mean you're going to right away start to get lots of downloads and sales. That's what marketing still is. It's still, it's still effort, even though now we can reach a very specific audience. And this is just Google+. Plus. We can do something like this on Twitter with hashtags. We can do something like this over on Facebook with boosted posts. We can use all the social networks to reach an audience that cares for free. But it takes that time and that effort. Find and join, so the strategy is app promotion strategy. 
find and join relevant communities, read the rules, post links to your apps on the app stores, be active in the community to build an audience. So you don't always have to post on these communities and say, check out my app, check out my app. You could reply to other people. You could like other people's stuff. You could just be a community, a good community member. You're building this audience. Your people are seeing that you're active and legitimate because then I could get follows. Right now I have zero followers, but as I start to be active and, and be known in communities, I could get followers. And then followers will, in theory, be much more interested in what you post about. And then when you're posting your, your latest apps or updates and such, people will know about it. being active plus one so for other people for other on other people's posts plus one things which is a like comment be share so be active on other people's posts in the social media class we go into much more detail on all of this but basically you get what you give if you give likes, you get likes back. If you comment, you get comments back. If you follow, you get follows back, follow backs. If you reshare, you get reshares back. So if you're active, if you're social in a social network, it comes back to you. Your investment is time and effort rather than money because that radio ad is not free, that TV ad is not free, that person spinning the sign is not free. Those flyers you're going to put on people's windshields are not free. You paid for the copy machine. So marketing in the real world, 99% of the time, is not free. In the digital world, it is. And you can reach a big audience. So any questions on social media marketing? This will be like, uh, what was that old saying about you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So I'm going to lead you guys. I'm going to lead you horses to Google+, Plus, but it's up to you to drink. It's up to you to use it. It's up to you to post. That's as much as I'll say for this because it's a bigger topic. If you're further interested in social media marketing and social media, take my social media class. Um, I have to look up when it's coming up, but most likely next month in September. We get into much more detail. We talk about all the networks what works on most of the networks and such individually but at the very least here making you aware here's a spot for you for free to start to reach an audience to find out about your app Google Plus communities Is there any jobs for